uh, many people say that you are a sex symbol of cinematography. Do you believe yourself to be so? And is it important for you to be liked by the audience? <laughs> you know, uh, my job is to turn up and say my lines and do it as best I can. And uh, I try not to think about anything else. Uh, У меня такая работа прийти, прочитать строчки, и я, честно, о своем больше ни о чем не думаю. Sorry for the boring answer. Are you aware of the disappointed Killian Murphy meme on the internet? The what? The disappointed Killian Murphy meme. I don't know. It's a meme. Uh, so in junkets, the people, your fans on the internet are saying that when you're not speaking sometimes, you look like you're disappointed in someone <laughs> a long way away. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you think of that? Uh, well, I'm glad I know what a meme is. <laughs> um, but um, these days can be a little long sometimes. <laughs> You know? He's just made him terribly self-conscious oh, of himself at the moment. <laughs> Obviously, when he's completely unself-conscious, he's ruined his life. <laughs> I, I, I hope not. No, <laughs> if it helps, they love me. Oh, I thought I was not exaggerating. Oh, good. Yeah. I think I was exaggerating. I think yeah. probably yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was, Do you think you'd like to work with Jamie again? No. He's probably saying something very different. Are you saying nice things? <laughs> I'm saying like extraordinarily nice things over here. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, um, you know, you're amazing. <laughs> he actually said you'd be so a great director. Yeah, did he? Um, See, we're not, 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 Irish people are just such good liars. <laughs> and it's not, it's not constrained by any formula. And that came from the whole spirit of jazz, which is the freedom to, to express yourself on your instrument, which has been lost, it can be argued, through the 80s and through the early 90s with, with playing through pop formula, playing to songs that appeal melody-wise and that are based on three chords, whereas this is the freedom to go a bit further with music and to try different, uh, try different um, styles and different, different modes and get them into one formula and mix it down to something different. Obviously it has its roots in jazz and 70s music, but it's now moving on. It's becoming popular now, really popular. And um, I think it's great because you now people of our age and stuff are beginning to appreciate musicianship as opposed to catchy tune, you know? They begin to appreciate live music. Hiya, thanks for coming. Um, I'm Killian. Uh, this is Jeff. Um, we're just going to have a conversation um, about stuff, stuff. <laughs> I don't really, generally not on this side of the um, interaction, but I'll do my best. So, welcome to Dublin. You're two days away from starting filming the new series and you've got to get the hair cut. <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling, Killian? I'm kind of getting I'm kind of getting used to it now, you yeah. know. People are going into barbers asking for a peaky, you know, it's uh, uh, why? I don't know what they are. <laughs> um, willfully voluntarily. Well, we didn't really know, you know, you just got to, you know, do the work as best you can and um, be as honest and truthful as you can and then hopefully people will will engage you with it and invest with it, and they have, so I'm delighted. Has it got under your skin, the whole story? Yes, absolutely. And he's a very complicated character, Tommy Shelby, and uh, it's quite exhausting playing him, actually. Um, but I, I, I love it, so I feel kind of privileged. What about the haircut? Yeah, that's another issue. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Does it hurt? No, it's just my children think I'm ridiculous, you know. So, um, but uh, apparently now it's very hip to get a haircut like that. that I mean, and, and also, you know, even in, in, not necessarily those scenes, but in just some, some of the more sort of emotional scenes, to have Sean right there beside us and being able to just, you know, just whisper to us, you know, direction and stuff was very, very powerful and it felt very sort of safe environment. Yes. <laughs> that was that was mostly to Jamie. Yeah, that, that was inst that was instant. <laughs> how how long had had you been kind of wanting? <laughs> I'm just going to ignore this as this unfolds. Nobody wants You'll to get see used that. to it. Don't we? That's just <laughs> shocking. Before you had to swim and hold your breath for like four minutes, were there some other crazy moments during filming? I did a bit of skiing, and I skied into the camera a few times. Really? Yeah. How would you avoid getting hurt? Uh, I don't know. I just went like that. It's not in the movie, obviously. Okay. Great. Well, congratulations. Thank oh no! You can't do 
can't do that. That is an over-designed term, Tim. <laughs> Skiing. I had to learn to ski in a couple of days. Literally, with you, we learned, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yes. You were very good, though. You were good. Right. What was that skiing instructor called again? Can't remember. Tom. Marie. Was it Mar Marie? Marie. I don't know. Right. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> but she was awesome. Yeah, we had yeah. great, great. You know, people, teams to like help you learn intensively and quickly, which is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, I mean, that's, I was heartbroken. Yeah? I mean, you recovered enough now. Why is hair being chopped off at the moment? I'm still, I'm still morning. And just a couple of quick questions for a lightning round um, for our audience. Um, which emoji do you use the most? I'm not a really an emoji guy. Oh, I prefer spelling words correctly. Okay. <laughs> there is that one that's a smiling twirl of shite. Oh, you like that one? It's very strange. Uh, Apparently the emoji people have said... We all grew facial hair. I mean, everybody. I think there was 11 moustaches uh, on set. I'm sure you'll answer different this time. Probably. Yeah, okay, you hit your shoes. Okay, uh, so... Uh, yeah, okay, you hit your shoes. Uh, uh, what do you love about uh, your life? What I love about my life? Yeah. Yeah, that is a very good question. Um, I, I basically very lucky to be doing what I love. And, uh, yeah, that, you know, that's really it, as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Yay! Well, thank you for your answer. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> I'm sure you've had better ones, but thank uh, you. Of course, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thanks. Hey. Como estas? Como estas? Muy bien. Killian. Hello. Mi amigo. Y tú? Eres romántico. Do you hope so? Oh, sí. Si. <laughs> Hasta I la vista. So. Ask his wife. Adios, Killian. Adios. Adios, Jamie. Adios. It's Killian. <laughs> his name is Killian. <laughs> the young boy's name. I'll take that as a compliment, I think. Um, <laughs> not quite sure. How uh, fitting is it for you to be here in Birmingham um, for the premiere, world premiere of the second series? Yeah, it's great. I mean, uh, the show is about Birmingham, uh, and Steve is from Birmingham. I'm clearly not from Birmingham, but uh, I'm loving being here and uh, delighted uh, that so many people turned out, and I hope they enjoy the second season. Well, I think there's a, there's a lovely tradition in, in storytelling of the, the knock on the door and who's, who's at the door. And Tom kind of embodies that device in storytelling. He is the knock at the door, the sort of unexpected guest. And I like to think of him kind of in a very positive way as a kind of a human hand grenade. <laughs> or a, or, a, or, a, or a, like a, a story hand grenade. Because when he, he comes and knocks at the door, things change. And he changes the dynamic of the group and he kind of alters the course of the story. Through phases, sometimes you dream very intensely and, and you can remember them, and other times it, you don't remember them at all, you don't dream at all. And I think it tends to do with what sort of condition you're in, sort of physically and emotionally at the time. Uh, and they're so subjective that, one, you know, and people say that listening to other people's dreams is the most sleep-inducing <laughs> thing yeah. possible. Uh, um, so, you know... I Kirk is going to be all about, and you're tackling a very similar time frame. Talk to me about the relationship with Noel and, and working with him once again on the new film. Well, I'm just very lucky. I mean, I met Chris uh, on Batman Begins, which I guess is... I don't know, I generally judge it by how many children we've all had <laughs> in, the, in the interim. So, a lot. It's a long time ago, and uh, he's been very loyal to me, and I, you know, I, I, I think he's... You know, one of the, the few great original filmmakers that we have these days. Well, um, we definitely thought about that every day. Um, am I answering that as well? Um, you don't have to. If you don't want to. We can move to the next question if you want. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> An enjoyable experience for you guys? One made you want to work together again in the future? You must be so happy you get down through this. <laughs> it's my turn. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's just, so when, you, when you're casting it, two-hander you know it's always a gamble really you've got to get it right I think and and I think luckily this one w worked out you know um, I'm just bored of taking the mickey out of so I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna tell it straight <laughs> did you did you guys feel that on set you're like he's so young no actually no it, it didn't really feel like that because he's such a good actor and, and 
and I, and I think that you know it was such an ensemble everybody was there for each other and uh, we all kind of looked out for each other um, so no he's already he look after himself he's spider-man yeah. <laughs> <laughs>